I invite you to rise in body or in spirit as we affirm what we believe through a modern affirmation of faith. It's in our United Methodist hymnal. The words will actually be on your screens. We, uh, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is one true church, apostolic and universal, whose holy faith let us now declare. We believe in God the Father, infinite in wisdom, power, and love, whose mercy is over all his works, and whose will is ever directed to his children's good. We believe in Jesus Christ, Son of God and Son of Man, the gift of the Father's unfailing grace, the ground of our hope, and the promise of our deliverance from sin and death. We believe in the Holy Spirit as the divine presence in our lives, whereby we are kept in perpetual remembrance of the truth of Christ and find strength and help in time of need. We believe that this faith should manifest itself in the service of love as set forth in the example of our blessed Lord, to the end that the kingdom of God may come upon the earth. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. It's prayer time. And so I invite you, whether you are joining us in this historic sanctuary or if you are comfortably at home, uh, to find a position of prayer that is most comfortable for, for you. Uh, you can always join us at the kneeling rail and lay your burdens down before God and lift up those petitions there. Or you can stay in your pews. Whatever is comfortable to you, we invite you to do that at this time as we take our concerns and our thanksgiving to God in prayer. It is a sweet hour when we can come and talk to you, blessed God. Oh, it is just a privilege to be able to come to you and to share our concerns with you, to lift them up to you. And we have confidence that you hear each and every one of us as we pray together, God. What a amazing God you are. We thank you for the blessing of being here this morning together, for getting us up this morning, for making sure that we came here to hear a word from you. Not Pastor Chris's word, not Pastor Jasmine's word, but your word, a word that is truly effective and will transform us if we would just say yes to making space for it in our lives. Open our hearts this morning, God, in our ears that we might hear this word and change our lives for the better, that we might live closer to how you would have us to live, that we might be better disciples of yours as we go out into this world and reflect the light that you have given each of us in our own lives to others so that they may know that you are a good, good God. We bring our concerns to you this morning, God. For those who are traveling, we pray traveling mercies. For those who are experiencing the extreme heat outdoors, Lord, we pray this morning, 
Lord, may we be a city and a state and a church that takes seriously your call to those on the margins, to the the least of these. And when we see the least of these suffering, may your words to us embolden us to be your hands and feet in this world to relieve some of the suffering that happens outside these doors. May we give a cup of water in your name. May we give sustenance in your name. May we pass on the grace that you have given us in your name. And may we be a people that works together to fight the systems that are against many of us in this country, especially those who are underhoused or unhoused, who are more prone to experience the effects of this heat that has been oppressive. And Lord, we ask for relief for cooler temperatures. We bring you those this morning who are ill, who are sick, who need your healing, your mercy. We ask that you would give it this morning. Most of all, we just ask that you would be with us. Uh, As we are a people who are in need of you, God. We need you desperately. We watch the news, we learn of conflicts all over the world. We learn of violence in our streets, in our neighborhoods. I lift up those who experienced that violence in Arkansas this week. And really just all over the country, Lord, we are suffering from an epidemic of violence. And we so desperately need your peace your peace that overcomes conflict, that transforms conflict into the love of siblings. And so please bring that that peace and that, that sense of justice that we so desperately need in our lives and that we lack so often. Be with us now as we continue to worship you And let that worship extend out into the world far after we are done worshiping you here this morning. For we ask all these things in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory now and forever. Amen. Amen. Friends, it's giving time. It's the time where we come together to say thank you to God for all of the blessings that God has given unto us. And we don't say thank you to God in a small way. We say thank you to God in a big way. So this is our opportunity to say thank you to God in a big way by tangibly giving back a portion of what God has given unto us. You may give through online, um, securely, atlantafirstumc.org slash give. You may give through Cash App. You may text to give. You may mail a check or you may donate other gifts through the finance office. Every time you give, you say thank you to God and you make room for new friends. You make room for our children. You make room for those who cannot eat or um, don't have a place to sleep. It is through the dollars that God has entrusted you that make the difference in this community and beyond. Now, I know I missed y'all this Sunday, 
uh, last Sunday, and we weren't here on the first Sunday. So that means that some of you haven't given your June gifts to God. So I'm going to invite you to pour out generously so that we can end this month strong and continue to do the work of ministry for God. Amen? As the ushers are preparing to come, I invite you to stand as we praise God through the doxology. series, The Gospel in Disney Pixar's Elemental. And we have been journeying along with Ember and her family, and we continue also to journey with the Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, beginning in verse 1 reading from Eugene Peterson's translation of the message, says these words. Companions, as we are in this work with you, we beg you, please don't squander one bit of this marvelous life God has given you. God reminds us, I heard your call in the nick of time. The day you needed me, I was there to help. Well, now is the right time to listen, the day to be helped. Don't put it off. Don't frustrate God's work by showing up late throwing a question mark over everything we're doing. Our work as God's servants gets validated or not in the details. People are watching us as we stay at our post, alertly, unswervingly, in hard times, tough times, bad times, when we're beaten up jailed and mobbed, working hard, working late, working without eating, with pure heart, clear head, steady hand, and gentleness, holiness, and honest love. When we're telling the truth, and when God is showing God's power, when we're doing our best setting things right, when we're praised and when we're blamed, slandered and honored, true to our word, though distrusted, ignored by the world, but recognized by God, terrifically alive, though rumored to be dead, beaten within an inch of our lives, but refusing to die. Immersed in tears, yet always filled with deep joy. Living on handouts, yet enriching many. Having nothing, having it all. Dear, dear Corinthians, I can't tell you how much I long for you to enter this wide open, spacious life. We didn't fence you in. The smallness you feel comes from within you. 
Your lives aren't small, but you're living them in a small way. I'm speaking as plainly as I can and with great affection. Open up your lives. Live openly and expansively. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O oh Lord, we've come expecting a word from you. So speak, Lord, for your servants are listening. Hide this, your servant, behind that old rugged cross, so that everything that is said and everything that is heard comes straight from you, O oh God. This is your servant's prayer. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. What does it mean to live a small life? What does it mean to live a small life? Because Paul is teaching the Corinthians and thereby teaching us that God did not create us to live a small life. But, but this can be easily misinterpreted. We can easily say that small means modest or that small means unimportant or that small means, well, small. But it's important that we do not confuse smallness and modesty. Modesty is not small if that is what God has called you to. And God has called a lot of people to a modest life. And on the flip side, grandiose is not expansive. Or spacious. Just because you have little doesn't mean you live a small life. And just because you have a lot doesn't mean you live an open or spacious or expansive life. Only God can give us the life that God intends for us to have. But that life, the good life, the best life, abundant life comes with sacrifice. Did, did you hear the sacrifice this morning? If we back up in chapter 5, we remember that we have tents that are not handmade, but God made, and that when we live the life with God, we will be resurrected and we won't lead these tents anymore. And we also learn in chapter five that we're to be ambassadors of Christ and that we're Christ's representatives. So that comes with a cost. But Paul says, don't put it off. Don't avoid it. If you avoid what it costs to follow God, then you avoid the life that God created you for. If, if you show up late or throw a wrench into everybody else who has been working's plan, then you avoid the life that God has created for you. If you get dissuaded or you find it too hard or too tough or too hot or too much, you abdicate your access to the life that God has created you for. The people of God in the time of Corinthians are still very close to the resurrection and there are still people who are calling them crazy, saying that they are out of their minds, 
saying that the resurrection did not happen. They are beating them. They are pulling them out of their businesses and taking them over. All kinds of terrible things are happening because people say that they want to follow Jesus. And this is not a long gone happening. There are places all over this world where we could not be sitting in this beautiful sanctuary or worshiping online without threat of being bombed or killed or hauled off to jail. And yet Paul says to them, to us, Now is the time. Now is the time to experience the marvelous life that I created for you and that you are created to live. Don't give up when it's hard. But with a pure heart and a clear head and a standing steady hand and in gentleness and holiness and honest love, tell the truth and watch God's power. The truth of the matter is there are some children who grow up just footsteps from this church who are being told you can never be that. There are children who grow up just footsteps from 360 Peachtree Street who are told that you'll never amount to anything at all. Your daddy wasn't anything, your mama wasn't anything, and you won't be anything. The truth of the matter is that there are adults who live a small life because that is the only thing they have ever seen and the only thing they have ever been offered. And we ooze all over the place with our smallness. We try to tell God what is possible when God has said that nothing is impossible with God. Oh, Pastor Chris, it's awful quiet in here this morning. It, it, it's a little bit uncomfortable in here this morning. God's admonition to the Corinthians and to us is to open up our lives, to bust through all of the barriers that we have been told that we cannot bust through. He says, live openly and expansively. But this admonition is easier said than done. Expectations are everywhere. Requirements are everywhere. The rules to society and the life that must be followed, lest we be viewed as different, strange, weird, less than, or even worse, the least of these. In the United States, there is a way and it must be followed. It was the same in Corinth. Paul is challenging the way of society and is asking the people of God to step up, to step out of smallness and to step up to God's openness. The scripture begs us, please, please don't squander one bit of this marvelous life God has given us. Now is the right time to listen. Don't put it off. Don't frustrate God's work. We often say it too flippantly. 
that we were created in the image of God. And we say it too easily that we were created with gifts and with abilities that God put in us when we were created in our mother's womb. And when we don't understand the depth of of knowing that we were created in the image of God with God-given gifts, then it's really hard to understand that we can break through. (coughs) We can break through the smallness, the expectation, and the hardships of life. In the award-winning Netflix Shondaland drama, Bridgerton, (laughs) I know what y'all been doing. Me too. I need to go finish. Violet Bridgerton tells her must-get-it-right son named Colin. She says, I'm proud that you're my sensitive child. I'm proud of your sensitivity. She said, but living to please others? I imagine it can be wearying at times. Painful, perhaps. So I do not blame you for putting on armor lately, but you must be careful that the armor does not rust and set so that you might never be able to take it off. So many of us are stuck. We're stuck in what should be. We're stuck in what is. We're stuck in what was. And the consequence of that is a small life in the eyes of God. God is begging us to use the gifts that God has given us to bless the world around us. So in our movie Elemental, Ember goes to Wade's house to await the news of whether she has saved her family's shop. In the midst of what could have been a disaster, her gifts, her God-given gifts shine through. Let's watch this clip. Use a sponge around him. I was stuck in there for hours. <laughs> oh, Alan, that was new. My bad. I'm all whirlpool tonight. I can fix it. That was incredible! It's just melted glass. Just melted glass. Every building in the new city is built from just melted glass. Oh no, you have to do something with that talent. See? I told you you're special. Sometimes it's hard for us to see our own gifts because her entire life has been focused on taking up the family manor mantle of the fire shop. But wow, she's amazing. She's amazing with forming glass. She has saved the city from a water intrusion, but that's not the life she's waiting to receive. 
Let's watch a little bit more. Hello? Gail, hi. Glass! You repaired it with glass? Hold the storm. Tempered glass. Solid as a rock. I like it. Consider the tickets canceled. We did it? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> awesome! <Woo! laughs> oh. Oh. Um. <laughs> oh. Thank you, Mrs. Ripple. This was... This was really great. Yeah, it was. And I mean what I said about your talent. I have a friend who runs the best glassmaking firm in the world. During dinner, I slipped out and I made a call, and I told her about you. They're looking for an intern. It could be an amazing opportunity. For real? It's a long way from the city, but it would be an incredible start. You have a bright future. Well, look at me. I have an original ember. <laughs> Hold up. I'll walk you out. I'm afraid you're still going to have to wait out here, ma'am. And I'm afraid I will throw up. Ember! Ember, hold up! What's going on? I can't believe she basically offered me a job. I know! Could it be cool? Yeah, super cool, Wade. I could move out, make glass in a faraway city, do whatever I want. I don't understand. I'm going home. Fine, then I'm going with you. Uh, and what, her guy? Look, my mom was just trying to be helpful. She doesn't know how excited you are to run the shop. Ah! What is the matter? Nothing. Yeah? Because we're going like a thousand of us. You don't know me, Wade, OK? So stop pretending like you do. What is this about? Nothing. Everything. I, I don't know. It's... I don't think I actually do want to run the shop, OK? That's what my temper has been trying to tell me. I'm trapped. You know what's crazy? Even when I was a kid, I would pray to the blue flame to be good enough to fill my father's shoes someday. Because this place is his dream. But I never once asked what I wanted to do. I think that's because deep down, I knew it didn't matter. Because the only way to repay a sacrifice so big is by sacrificing your life too. Sometimes we struggle because we think we're doing what we must do and what we're supposed to do but we're not listening. We're ignoring that God is trying to help us know that we are seen and give us deep joy through helping us live a wide open, spacious life. We are our own worst enemy. We keep ourselves fenced in and trapped we think we know what is best based on the expectations that have been drilled into us since we were little kids. But maybe, just maybe, maybe God is trying to open up our lives. Maybe it's gotten boring or hard because God is saying, there is more. How do we know? First, we have to pay attention. Ask some questions of yourself and God. What frustrates you? What frustrates you to no end? And then ask, what brings you joy? What brings you that deep joy down in your soul that cannot be contained? And what? What just won't go away? 
If you notice, when Ember is making glass, she transforms into this calm and expansive person. But we've seen in other clips in the movie that when she's working in the shop, she's uptight and small and angry. Pay attention. The second way we open up our lives is to not get caught up in fear. Jesus has promised us that in this life there will be trouble. Things will not always be smooth or easy. There will be bumps in the road. Things will not always happen the way that we have imagined it. But more than any other phrase in the Bible, from Old Testament to New Testament, the scriptures tell us, do not be afraid. Because it's never too late for God to bust in and to show out. So if we're going to open up our lives, we must pay attention. We cannot be afraid. And finally, we must be willing to pivot. You know, I really didn't like that word pivot because some people I know use it a whole lot. There are all these books around pivot. And when my dad said he was going to retire, he would say that um, he's not retiring. He's pivoting into his next phase of life. But the more I think about the word pivot, the more I like the word Because pivot means that you have to move, that something has to change. You can't stand still and be where you are and be exactly the same and still, Miss Ruby, pivot. Every time I pivot, something changes. Every time I pivot, something has to move. Something in motion will remain in motion unless it is made to stop. That is one of Newton's laws of motion. And it's also a law of health. If you keep moving, it's harder for you to stop moving because when you stop moving, it's almost impossible to start moving again. So, so many people are stuck in smallness. They are trapped and bound in one place. They cannot move. They cannot see what is ahead. They cannot see anything different. And God is saying, move. Pivot. Change. If you want to move from smallness to openness to expansiveness, you must pay attention. You cannot be afraid. And you must pivot. You and Ember have a choice to make. What will it be? Smallness, stuckness, openness, expansiveness. Your way or God's way. To be continued next week. This morning, the invitation is for openness. If you feel like you've been stuck and you need to move, this is the time to do it. The altar rail is open for you to say to God, I need something to give. I need something to change. I know I'm living in a box, but you have not created me to live in this box. And for those of you who need some help paying attention or not living in fear or moving, pivoting, this church family stands ready to help you. 
So you are invited to come and to join this community of faith so that we might together choose God, choose openness and expansiveness and get unstuck. This is the time. This is the season. If you are in this room, you might come forward now. And if you're online, send us an email or call us so that you might join this place. The song says, we offer Christ to you. So come, come on to Christ. So to Christ. As we continue this morning, we prepare to leave this place, but we don't leave God's presence. We leave this physical building or this place of worship of tabernacle online, but we never leave God's presence. We never leave the opportunity to respond to the invitation of openness. So go forth from this place but not from the presence of the Almighty God. Go forth rejoicing, knowing that you know that you know that God is not going to leave you alone <laughs> until you bust out of the smallness and live into the expansiveness. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen.